Hey, what is going on guys? Rulinel here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial. And alright, now in the last couple of videos we've been checking out the Sys module, and we're going to be doing that same thing today. But today in this video, I think I want to be actually showing you guys probably what I would say the most important or like the most essential thing that you'll be learning with a Sys module. This, this little functionality is probably so handy you'll be using it in every program that you write, especially if you're going to be working in the command line a lot. Now, you probably have already guessed by what I'm, about what I'm going to be teaching you by looking at the title of this video. So, let's actually jump right into it. Let's say if I had a program that I was running from the command line, uh, let's say it was just simple Echo, how about that? If I ran Echo, Echo is a program, of course, maybe it's not written in Python, maybe it's not written in whatever we're working at the time, but it takes arguments. It can pass in things to the program that it can sort of like manipulate and work with. So if I said like, What's up, YouTube? That string is what we've passed into Echo. So, Echo is able to work with these command line arguments and actually do something with them. So now the programs that we write in Python and uh, inside of our scripts, these are doing the exact same thing. I'm sure you were probably thinking in your head, wait, wait, wait a second, John, John, I know. I know what parameters, I know what arguments are. There's those, there's those numbers and those strings and those pieces of text and those doodads that you pass to a function, right? And I'm going to say to you, yes, yes, you're exactly right. And I'm going to pack you on the back, give you a cookie, and start baking you a cake because you're so smart. But we can do that exact same thing with our Python program and with our little script here. So we can actually access that by the sys module. So anyway, that's enough of me talking. Let's actually start programming and writing some code. So I'm going to create a new script here. I'll go ahead and call it file.python. I'm okay with overwriting whatever's there. I'm going to start writing my shebang line. Obviously, if you're on Windows, you may not have to do this. But, I'll get a main function ready for us. That's one of the most important things. And we can go ahead and test if the name of this is equal to all the crap that we do. All right. We can run main. And most importantly, we can import our sys module. Now, we're accessing the command line arguments by a list, or an array. I'm sure you guys remember that those two terms are synonymous, especially in Python. The list is sort of like this cluster, or like this, uh, lots of different variables or values. It's like multiple values. So, we can access the arguments, or the parameters that we're working with, by a variable called sys.argv. Now, that is the array, or list, of all the variables, or especially the values. You can think of the V as values, and arg for, obviously, arguments. Now, if I get a terminal over here, we can go ahead and check out what these things are. If I were to type in Python, run file.python, you can see we've got an array here, but there's nothing in it just yet other than the name of the program that we're currently running, and file.python. It's going to be sys.argv and zero, that's going to be the first index that we're at. Now if I run this Python file, you can see that exact same thing. It's just the string version of it because we're outside of the array, or at least specifically we're inside the rear array. It's whatever you want to think of it. But anyway, that's what I want to be showing you. If I actually called that program once more, but I passed in some new uh, variables here, like uh, let's say um, what or YouTube, file.python, file and then we have what, and then we have YouTube. It'll keep going on and on and on and on. It's just going to fill up this array with all the different things that we pass to the program. And of course, it's separated by a space. I'm sure you can see that there. Like you were typically writing in the shell, whether or not you be in Linux, whether or not you be on Windows, on Batch, or whatever. The things that you're writing are getting passed in and separated by spaces. Okay, so let's keep working with this, though. What we actually want to do is actually... How about, we, how about we write an application that does something kind of special? Let's say we give it the information that we want. Let's say we give it uh, the name of a file, and how about a word? How about that? And what this program will do is it'll look through the file, and for every occurrence of the word, it'll add to a number, and that will eventually make this program just tell us how many occurrences there are of a single word inside the program. How about that? Does that sound cool enough to you guys? Let's let's try it out. So, let's say 
typically we would normally be working with a file name because that's the piece of information that we need. We need the needle or the word that we're looking for. And uh, normally we would just very simply like ask the users, hey, what do you actually want for the word here? And that sort of thing. But we want to be actually implementing this new newfound knowledge and this newfound idea that we have. So let's actually take a hold of the stuff that we have here with our command line arguments. And what we're going to do, first of all, is actually test how many arguments that we have. And since we're looking at those inside of an array, I'm sure you guys can probably already guess what function we're going to be using. We're going to test if the length of sys.argv is less than 3, and we're using 3, remember, because we had 3 of these here. We had file name, I'm sorry, the program name, another one there for the file name, and then another one here for the word that we're going to be looking for. So if it's less than 3, what we're going to do is uh, have a hissy fit. We're going to tell the user, no way, man. We actually only want to be able to run this program if you supplied the right arguments for us. If they haven't, though, what we're going to actually do is give them a heads up. We can type in standard error and, you know, actually write to the standard error. We can get some review of the stuff that we've learned. So I'm going to use an E here. Typically, that's just like a little notification that, hey, there's an error. And I'll display the usage. And I'm going to have the name of the file, or at least, I'm sorry, the name of the program that we're running, so sys.argv with the zero index, plus, and then inside here we want the file name, and I don't know if you guys can see to the end of this, but we also want the word. Okay. Now we'll, of course, flush standard error. I'm sure you guys remember that was sort of like the norm when we were ever writing the standard error. And we can go ahead and exit the program with a exit code or exit status that is greater than zero, or anything other than zero. And we can of yours, I'm sorry, we can of course use the system module here to be able to do that, but we don't really have to since Python does the exact same thing all by itself. Alright, now we, if not, if they, if we actually do have these arguments, what we can go ahead and do is actually set file name to equal to sys.argv1, remember we're using one because the program name is zero, and needle can be sys.argv2. Now that's all that we really need. We can get out of these, this code block here because um, this is going to run regardless since this will exit the program if that code were to run. So we don't really need to be in the else statement anymore. We could be in there. The same functionality would happen, but it's okay for us to sort of just jump out right now. Okay, so now what we want to actually do is go ahead and begin to look through the file. So we're going to need to open it up. Let's create ourselves a file handle use our open function and pass in the file name and we should be good to go. So let's begin to start looping through it. For line in file handle dot read lines now we get all the content in each, in each line but we want to be looking for the words remember. So in each line what we'll do is we will go ahead and say words is going to equal to line dot split. Now remember split turned a whole string into an array, and we're going to be using this space as a delimiter here, as if it were, you know, just a sentence full of words. They all have spaces in between them. So we can go ahead and start looking through those words. So for word and words, if word is equal to needle, then we found it. And what we want to do there is we actually want to keep track of what we found. So we kind of need like a counter. We need something that was going to uh, keep track of how many times that we find this. So let's go ahead and create an integer variable. It's uh, counter can equal zero for now. And then back inside of our conditional statement in our loop, we can just say counter plus equals, uh, let's say, um, one, of course. Okay, so now we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and, let's see, print counter, and then we're ready to rock. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and roll over to my uh, terminal here. Now if I run python file.python, oh, bool has no length. Looks like I forgot to close that, that little uh, len function up there. Try and make sure that your um, arguments I'm sorry, your sys.argv, the little list or array of the variable that you're working with, stays inside, you know, the length parentheses. That was on that was my own mistake. Sorry about that. 
But when we run this, we actually get the information that, hey, we've got an error here. We actually have a specific usage to be able to run this program. So we need, let's say, a file name. Let's say um, file.python. Well, that's not enough either. We still need another word. So file.python, let's say, um, let's see, what else do I want here? I guess the brackets kind of seem like a word. Oh, nope. <clears throat> Let's say done. Now, we get zero. Because done, obviously, isn't in the source code for our, our thing here. I'm going to make this a little bit easier on myself and just go ahead and actually create a new file that will allow me to, uh, you know, look through the code here. So, I'm going to go ahead and say nano, I think it's test.txt. And I had actually written this prior. And it says, this is the sys module series, and it's almost done. We are nearly done. Just a few more videos that I need to get done. So, kind of weird, but hey, it's, it, it works fine. So, if I were to run python, file.python, and I had test.txt, oh, no, I forgot a word. We're going to pass in done, and we still get zero. Huh. That's not good. That's not what we wanted. Okay, let's go, let's go ahead and backtrack a little bit. Um, we're going to need to know what our needle is, for one thing. Let's go ahead and print needle, just to make sure that works well for us. Yeah, our needle is done. I mean, that, that, that makes sense. That's exactly what we told it to be. How about we check out the words? Alright, now we can look at, back in our terminal, run this again. This is the sys module series, and it is almost done. Aha! Do you guys see what I'm looking at here? For every occurrence of done, we still have the, like, sort of trailing new line character. Now, we need to be able to get rid of that. So, uh, let's see what we can do here. We could, of course, go through every single word individually and just replace the backslash n with, um, the, uh, with nothing, so that way it'll get rid of it. But that's kind of a little dumb, too, because some of these may not actually have the thing here. It only seems to occur to the last word in the sentence, or the line, of course. Since it's the last word and we get to the very end of it, we just get to a new line. Okay, so we can try and think that through and actually put it into our, our code here. What we're going to do is we're going to test if the word is equal to the very last words, and we're going to be using our index with a negative one, so that's the last one. If this is the last one, what we're going to do is say word is going to equal word with that new line character replaced with nothing. We could, of course, just do sort of do like word um, equals word up until the last character. I think that might be a better idea, just because we aren't calling an explicit function. So let's go ahead and try that. I've commented out the replace one. File the text done. Unbound on Loki a word but reference before words. Sorry. <clears throat> Alright. Now what we can do is run that one more time. Unbound a word. Oh, I'm sorry. I had that completely outside of the, the loop. That was my own fault. Okay, because we need to actually be testing for each word inside the words. So if our word actually is the very last one, what we're going to do is get to the very end of it. And we have zero. Okay, so that didn't work for us. We can do subtract two. Still not working for us. Okay, what's the problem here? Let's try it with the replace syntax. And now we get three. Okay, that works fine for us. Huh. I see. It, it would have been word equal... Minus one. I'm sorry, I put the S in there because I was confused because I had it outside of the for loop to begin with, and then I just got ahead of myself and really made a mess there. But I'm going to quickly try and run this through one more time so you guys aren't too confused about what I had just done. Because I really screwed myself over there. Alright, so when we subtract one, that works perfectly fine. Okay, so if we go back to the top of the program and just sort of run this through, let's see what we got here. We're going to test if we have enough arguments. If we don't, we're going to let the user know, hey, you need about these arguments to actually run this program. 
What if, we, if we've got those, then we're going to set what we need to actually those arguments, and then we're going to go ahead and begin to start looking through the file. But we need, of course, a counter to be able to keep track of the number of words that we find. So, for every line in the file, what we're going to do is we're going to find each individual word by splitting up the line into each word, obviously, because of the spaces there. So now, for each word that we find in that line, for each individual word that we're looking through, if the word is the last one in the line, we get rid of that backslash n. Now, the backslash n is an escape character, remember, so it's essentially one character. So we're going to say word is equal to the word up until that point. We're slicing up until the negative one, or the last character. If it is, if the word is actually equal to the needle or what we were looking for, then counter is going to be uh, relative, or it's going to add one to what it initially was, and we get an updated version of the counter because we found the actual word that we're looking for. Now when we're done looping through the entire file, then we can go ahead and print out the counter or how many times that we found each of that word. Okay. So it's pretty hectic, but hey, it works for us. We can go ahead and find different things. We can decide uh, is, how about that? There are two is's in there. How many times we have a? There's one in there. Uh, we, there's one in there. Uh, L, obviously that's not going to work because it's trying to find words and there is no specific L. But if it were looking for letters, I'm sure it probably would be able to find some. So, you've got plenty of things to be able to keep your mind uh, active with with this little program. But anyway, the core functionality that I wanted to be able to show you guys in this video or this tutorial was that you can use the sys.argv uh, list or array to actually access your command line arguments that you would pass to your program. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, we definitely spent a lot of time with this one. I'm sorry for the couple of flops that I made, but I'm sure it was a good time for you to just sort of hang along and keep things going, because I'm sure you probably already knew everything that was going on and the way that we wanted to do this. But all right. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you again. Bye.